let's go ahead. Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for, your op for the opportunity to present my work here. And uh, so uh, we are talking, I'm going to talk about, live about the breadth of HIV-1 neutralizing antibody and the conservation of those aptop in, uh, in circulating viruses. And I work for US military HIV research program. So a little bit of background. As we know that uh, HIV continued to be a public health issue. It has claimed uh, 35 million lives so far. And uh, there are about 37 million people living with HIV. Uh, in 2016, there are about 1.8 million newly infected cases. And the v vast majority of the people living with HIV are in the middle and the low income countries, the, especially in the uh, sub saharan African region. And it is very challenging to control HIV because the virus will integrate into host genome and establish latency very, very early, maybe a few days or shorter than that. And the virus is tailored to attack immune system and it has a very high mutation rate which helps the uh, virus to evade drug control and immune surveillance. On the left side, we have a mature HIV-1 virus. On the surface of the virus, that's a protein called envelope protein. This protein is uh, responsible for receptor binding and uh, the fusion between the virus and the host. It is also the only target for neutralizing antibodies. And the, this, antibody, uh, this, this antigen is very uh, highly glycosylated, highly diverse, and metastable, which makes it very, very hard for, uh, for the uh, antibody to be to, to effectively targeting this, this target. But still, uh, there are about 5% of infected individuals manage to neutralize 95% uh, of circulating viruses. Uh, this heat map shows a few uh, selected antibody, uh, the neutralizing, uh, uh, neutralizing across a panel of virus. The colored blocks indicating the IC50 in the uh, neutralization IC, and the gray block indicating a resistance strain to that antibody. Uh, we can see that some, many of those bandic, uh, antibodies can neutralize a uh, quite broad uh, spectrum of uh, viruses. And stru structural studies have revealed uh, several typical uh, epitope sites, which is the uh, site that are targeted by antibodies. For example, the V2 glycan, V3 glycan, CD4 binding site, GP4, GP120, GP41 interface, and the emperor region. Uh, so a lot of data has been accumulated, but the limited uh, uh, systematic analysis or comparison between the epitope of different BNAPs, because this kind of, uh, this kind of analysis is very important to, for, because it may reveal the uh, key determinant for why some of those antibodies are so broad, but some others are not so broad. It is generally believed that uh, the broadly neutralizing antibody target conserved the site in the uh, envelope. For example, as reviewed in these three papers. So the antibody targeting the conserved site seems such an intuitive idea as that how, uh, it seems very intuitive that how they uh, achieve those uh, cross reactivity is just by targeting the conserved site. It seems too, too intuitive that uh, people don't even uh, question about it. So there's no uh, real solid data to support this, uh, this statement. So our question is, first is, we would like to see, is, this, is the breadth of the neutralizing uh, antibody really related to the conservation of the epitope among circulating viruses? And uh, 
if we are lucky enough, can we find some active feature that is associated with the neutralization breadth of those antibodies? To answer those questions, we need some data. So first, we have uh, 34 HF1 broadly neutralized antibodies. And those antibodies have those uh, envelope and antibody complex structure resolved. And uh, they also have the neutralization breadth that has been uh, ex exper uh, experimentally defined. So the bottom side, I show the uh, distribution of the neutralization breadth of those antibodies, which, so the, those antibody can neutralize uh, from 30% to almost 100% of circulating viruses. We also have several sequence data set to, uh, to uh, estimate the diversity of the epitope. So the first data set is a 136 panel, which is a pa virus panel they use to measure the uh, neutralization breadth. The second data set is a representative set of HIV-1 M group viruses, which, in which the proportion of each subtype correspond to their worldwide frequency. And we also have four uh, subtype specific alignment, which is for subtype A1, B, C, and uh, CRF1, OE, AE. So we have the data. Based on the antigen and um, antibody complex structure, we can extract the antibody contact site on the antigen, which is our uh, epitope site here. And then, so we, we, can, we can put those contact uh, antibody re uh, interaction to the antigen sequence, and we can, then we can put this epitope information in the context of our uh, alignment of these uh, circulating viruses. And then we can define the epitope uh, diversity so we define our epitope diversity uh, in this way. So the first term is, uh, is the Shana entropy of, the summation of Shana entropy of all epitope sites. So if these epitope sites are all independent of each other, this could be the epitope, uh, this, this would be the entropy of the whole epitope surface patch. But we know that uh, in protein, the uh, neighbor sites are more likely to covariant. So the second term, we adjusted uh, the uh, covariance by the, uh, we adjusted, we removed the covariance between neighbor pairs uh, in the epitope. And this is the uh, diversity we define is essentially the entropy of the epitope, which is the interpretation is uh, log two number of estimated uh, state of epitope in the circulating viruses. And we also define the epitope similarity so for example, we have a known antigen that be targeted by anybody. And uh, we use it as a reference. And we have, a, we have several different sequence data set. We can compare this, those sequences to the several reference sequence and define a similarity. And then uh, count the fraction of a similar sequence to this reference sequence. And that fraction, uh, that fraction of similar, similar sequence to this reference sequence may uh, relate it to the neutralization breadth. Mm, so that's our result. Uh, then here's some result. First, we, we like, as we talked before, people uh, it's generally believe that uh, uh, broadly neutralizing antibody may gain their cross reactivity by targeting uh, conserved site. So we would like to check, check whether those things are true. So first, we have a pre-fusion envelope trimer structure. We removed the barrier site in the structure, and then we removed the surface site, but uh, in the center of the envelope uh, trimer. And then we also remove the hyper-reliable loops that we don't, we can't establish a reliable alignment. Then we can't have a reliable estimate of those strong entropy for those sites. At last, we have uh, 288 uh, surface as accessible sites, among which 135 sites are targeted by anybody included in our data set. And uh, other 153 sites are not targeted by those sites. So we can see that uh, those epitope sites are not, uh, are not so different from non-epitope sites. The, 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 the distribution of the two group are not so, is not uh, significant. Uh, consider that some of, our, some of the antibody in our data set is not so broad. They may neutralize only 30% of circulating virus. So we also try to limit, the, uh, limit only the uh, antibody to, that can neutralize over 30% of circulating viruses. And we found still the epitope site of those broadly neutralizing antibody 
has no much difference between the non epitope site. So that means if we pull those epitope site together, it seems that that's no, that's, it's, quite, that's no, uh, it's just as diverse as other surface acceptor site. So that is for those individual epitope site. How about the surface patch? Because we, uh, we, we, we define those uh, diversity, we could define the diversity by the whole surface patch. So here is the, uh, the x-axis, x-axis is the uh, diversity that uh, defined for the whole epitope, which has a uh, nine to 35 epitope site for different antibodies. Uh, and the y axis is neutralization breadth. We can see there's no um, significant correlation between the two, the diversity and the neutralization breadth. So this is a very interesting. S but we know that uh, uh, in protein protein interaction, some, in, uh, some, uh, some sites are more important than other sites. So for, the, for, the, so for example, in this in the antigen, this site has a lot of antibody, or, uh, antibody residues around it. It may be more important than other, uh, than other residues for the uh, recognition of an antibody. So we ranked by those number of uh, neighbor antibody residues, and we pick only top nine epitope sites, and then define our uh, epitope diversity based on those only top nine epitope sites. Then we found that's a pretty strong correlation between the diversity and the neutralization breadth. And here shows, uh, we also try some other definition and uh, use different uh, sequence data set to estimate the diversity. The table shows the correlation coefficient between, uh, uh, the correlation coefficient between those definitions and the neutralization breadth. Uh, the main message here is just that the top nine set as uh, ranked by number of neighbor antibody residues consistently give very high correlation with uh, neutralization breadth and is also always give higher, neutral, uh, higher, higher correlation than other definitions we tested. And then we, that is for the diversity, we also tried the epitope similarity. So we have the neutralization panel, so we select the three most uh, susceptible strain uh, in this neutralizing assay, the, the finder, and then we find a fraction of uh, fraction of similar sequences in our data set to those reference sequences. And here uh, as axis, and the y-axis is neutralization breadth. We, in this way, we found that the correlation between the uh, fraction of similar uh, epitopes and the neutralization breadth, but it is the statistically significant, but uh, the correlation coefficient is not very high. And then we, again, we focus on the only top nine epitope site. And uh, we, we, we get a stronger correlation than we use the whole epitope set. That means we, achieve, we achieved a higher correlation uh, by just a focus on the top nine epitope site. So if we compare only the top nine epitope site, the fraction of a similar epitope to the uh, successful stream have maybe have, have just a stronger correlation with the neutralizing breath. So why the top nine site seems so special? So we have a case study about uh, the 3 bin c 17 and uh, vrc 3 These two antibodies share a very similar epitope. Both of them are 34 binding site epitope. So because they share a similar epitope site, so the diversity based on their, uh, by the whole epitope site of the two is just a similar, no big difference. However, the 3 bin c 17 uh, is, uh, is 34 uh, percent broader than VR03. So if we then, so we checked their top nine site on the epitope, uh, on, uh, on the epitope. So the epitope sites uh, here, the epitope surface are colored uh, according to the Shannon entropy of each individual site. Red means very diverse, uh, white means uh, just conserved. And the, we can see that 3 bin c 17 is uh, pretty conserved on those conserved sites in this epitope. But the vrc 3 may include some diverse, highly diverse site in their top nine set. So our interpretation, our interpretation is that 3B and c 17 may be again the, their neutralization breadth by just more focus on the conserved site than the vrc 3 uh, To sum it up, so we found that the Shannon entropy is essentially similar for the epitope and non-epitope site of the broadly neutral antibodies. 
it is it is the top uh, top additive set that is as run by uh, the number of neighbor animal residues was k to explain the uh, variance between the uh, breadth of different antibodies. If we define our property based on only those key additive sites, we can achieve pretty high correlation between this defined property and the neutralization breadth. And also our interpretation is that the broadly neutral antibody just gain the breadth by focus on those most conserved sites in the epitope. There are several potential applications. First, uh, it may assist in optimizing the breadth of neutralizing antibodies. For example, we can enhance, the, enhance or introduce inter, uh, in, uh, interaction with conserved site while diminish the interaction with diverse site. The epitope similarity we use here may also help in identify cross-reactivity of a known antibody to new emerging viruses. And uh, some of the concepts uh, we use here may be also applicable to general uh, protein protein recognitions. The acknowledgement, uh, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Morgan Roland, and that for her uh, support and thanks for discussion with uh, group members and thank to the MHRP leadership and uh, especially thank you for your attention. And I, have also, I also have a poster with, which is here. So you are welcome to stop by. Yes. So if you, if, you, if you use those four or five residues rather than top nine, uh, do you have a, some different results? Or what, what was the reason you choose nine? Yeah, so actually I tried different uh, numbers, so from uh, maybe seven to 11. And uh, uh, seven to 11, all of them can give, give pretty high correlation. But the top nine give the best correlation. And also the uh, the the sm smallest uh, epitope site is, uh, is epitope in our group in our data set is nine, so if we use ten or higher, uh, uh, the, some of them may have nine sites, some of them may have ten sites. So we have nine here.